Crispy, flavorful, and simple. Sisig is a Filipino dish that brings together its flavors with an unforgettable crunch. Chef Levon will be making it with chicken, bringing a lighter twist while still delivering that combination of savory and crisp textures. The magic of this dish is its simplicity, mixing fresh, accessible ingredients together to create something remarkable. Hey everyone, today we're going to be making Filipino sisig. In this recipe, we're going to be making it with chicken, although the classic Filipino sisig is made with pork belly, pork snout, and all the other good stuff. But we're gonna go ahead and kind of cater this to the American palate, and we're gonna make this with chicken and with everyday uh, ingredients that you can find at your grocery store. First up, we're prepping the ingredients to set the foundation for all the bold flavors in this dish. We start by dicing the onion and shallot, slicing the scallions and jalapenos thinly, and quartering the lemon to use for later. We just wanna make sure that they're broken up into little chunks so that when we eat this, you don't have a huge chunk of onion that you're biting into. So here I'm just adding another layer of onions and so we're gonna be adding in some shallots in here. Same deal here, cut them up into little dice, maybe a little bit of a smaller dice on this one. Now we're gonna take this jalapeno and we're gonna cut them up into little slivers. Uh, it's gonna be up to you if you want to use the seeds or not. Uh, seeds, you know, will make it a little bit more spicy, but you can go ahead and take that portion out if you'd like, or maybe you can even keep some of those in and like this. So maybe I can do half and half. So one half I'll keep the seeds, the other half I'll just go ahead and throw away. So this, you know, you just wanna go ahead and slice these up. I kind of quartered one whole jalapeno here. And we're just gonna go ahead and cut them into little slivers here. Then it's onto the main star, the chicken thighs. Chef Levon is using skin on, bone in thighs, with the skin being a crucial ingredient to bring that signature crispy texture to this dish. It's peeled off, then seared, chopped, and sprinkled on top. It adds that final satisfying crunch. Now it's time to debone the chicken thighs, a task that requires a bit of patience, but pays off in flavor. So when you're deboning, you can go ahead and run your knife through. If you see like a white area, usually it looks like a little pocket of fat, kind of like a little white strip. You can go ahead and then take your knife and run your blade through there. And then from there, you can just go ahead and release any of the meat and any ligaments that might be attached to the bone, kind of running your knife up and down until you kind of clear the sides here to let the bone kind of let loose. There's little bits and pieces of like ligaments as well as meat that's just stuck on that bone. You just want to run your knife through there. And then you wanna go underneath too, just like this, on the bottom of that bone, and try to keep your blade up top so you're not scraping away too much meat. And then you're just lifting that up, and then you're gonna scrape down here. Sometimes the meat sticks to the bone, you can just go ahead and cut that meat off so that we're not wasting any meat there. Once the bones are removed, the chicken is generously seasoned with salt, garlic powder, and onion powder while a wok is preheated with a bit of cooking oil. Okay, so that's good. And just go ahead and make sure you just rub that in there, really patting it dry. Let the moisture of the chicken kind of hydrate it so that it begins to stick onto the chicken as you're patting it into there. And as you salt this, a little bit of that moisture will kind of get slightly drawn out from that chicken thigh. So then, you know, you won't really have any dry powder on the outside of that chicken. The chicken skin goes in first to crisp it up beautifully and release its flavorful fat into the oil. And now just cooking that skin, 
until they get nice and brown. Chef Levon starts off with high heat, and after the skin is added, he goes down to a low medium heat, just so that the skin doesn't burn before it becomes crispy. Also keep in mind that as you're cooking the chicken skins, that you know, if you see it beginning to brown like nicely, like this one here, that's pretty much almost done. And even though it's soft at this moment, once it cools down, it's gonna crisp up. Okay, so that's looking good right here. So you can tell that a lot of that oil has been kind of released from there. You can see now there's a pool of oil. It took about eight minutes to do so, and it was set aside right after. Now, this infused oil will be used to sear the chicken, browning beautifully for about four to five minutes on each side. Once seared to perfection, they're transferred to a cutting board and sliced into bite-sized pieces, similar in size to the diced onions for an even mix. time to add the final ingredients. Soy sauce, nor seasoning, white vinegar, and mayonnaise. That's right, mayonnaise, which helps bind everything together, creating a smooth, cohesive blend that coats each piece of chicken and vegetable evenly. The creaminess of the mayo not only enhances the texture, but also balances the acidity from the vinegar and lime, giving each bite a perfectly smooth and flavorful finish. The reserved shallots are finely diced and sprinkled on top, along with a crispy chopped chicken skin for an extra crunch. Oh, you hear that? One thing that truly amazed me was how all the sliced ingredients, like the onions, scallions, and peppers, were mixed in raw, without any need for searing. I would have assumed that onions and peppers would be cooked along with the chicken to soften their flavors, but leaving them raw keeps everything fresh and bright, adding a unique crunch to this dish. Another surprise was the role of mayonnaise. It turns out to be the secret ingredient that brings everything together. Who would have thought? But there you have it, a perfect balance of savory, tangy, and crunchy flavors make chicken sisig an unforgettable dish. Each bite captures the vibrant heart of Filipino cuisine, a dish that's more than just food. It's a dish that brings people together and showcases the Filipino love for social dining. Put a little bit of rice on there. Can't have sisig without rice, you know? Mmm. And that is chicken sisig. I hope you enjoy this recipe. You know, hopefully you make it at home. Really simple ingredients, really easy to make, and I hope you enjoy it. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, here at our virtual table, we make this a place to inspire and learn. If this inspired you to make this, or if there's a certain way that you make this dish, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and hit that bell to stay tuned for next week's video where we finish off Filipino-American History Month as Chef Levon and I debate about Filipino cuisine. See you all in the next one.